Is this the object you picked up on your sensors? Confirmation. Yes, Master. A closer scan suggests that this object has been here for several centuries. Centuries? Of all the junk out here, you had to find the antique. Observation. Visible design elements do not match any from Zakulan culture, antique or modern. Not from Zakul. Could it be? He doesn't overthink things. Haha! <laughs> do you have any idea what this is? It looks like some kind of old spacecraft. This is the Gravestone. This was the only ship that ever went up against the Eternal Fleet and won. Do you have any idea how long people have been looking for this thing? And we just happened to stumble upon it. You said this ship went up against the Eternal Fleet and won, but it's rusting in a swamp while the fleet is still around. The fleet is even older than Valkyria, maybe even older than Zakul. The battles happened centuries ago. Nobody knows the details of the whole war, but every story talks about the Gravestone. One ship with the firepower to take on the Eternal Fleet. This is fate. We get your Outlander. Find exactly the weapon we need. We're going to win this thing, Mana. It's destiny. It's certainly no coincidence, but destiny? I think there's something else going on here. The Force can be a guide to anyone powerful enough to harness it. You know that better than most, Lana. This doesn't feel the same as our past missions. Something is off, but I can't be sure what. Let's have a look inside, huh? Assessment. Nearby signs of animal activity suggest local predators may be using this wreck as a nesting ground. Caution is advised. We'll split up, deal with any wildlife, then regroup to plan our next move.
This ship has been here for a thousand years, more? Right. It's amazing that it's in such good condition, considering. Judging by the damage I've seen, the stories are true. Whoever built the gravestone scuttled it themselves after the Eternal Fleet was defeated. It wasn't shot down. The fleet was defeated, but not destroyed. Valkorion brought it back under his own control more than a century ago. Exactly. The Eternal Fleet is totally automated. Nobody knows who first built it. And every theory is crazier than the last. Renegades left behind after a successful droid revolution. Representatives of an entire race of droids from somewhere beyond the edge of the known galaxy. Like I said, crazy stuff. But no matter where it came from, the Eternal Fleet is practically unstoppable. And Arkin controls every single ship from the throne. If Valkorion has had this unstoppable fleet for more than a century, why didn't he use it to help the Sith Empire defeat the Republic? We can only theorize. Uh, if the war was just part of a ritual to make the Emperor truly immortal, perhaps using the fleet would have interfered somehow. Regardless, we have many other things to discuss. I owe you five years' worth of explanations. And I'm gonna need some parts to get this thing moving again. Locating supplies and fresh water would also be wise. I'll help you find what we need, Lana. Very well. Assertion. I will begin a patrol pattern to ensure that no enemy forces report our position. Thank you. 
Ma and I faced Valkorion, we knew right away. He was the Sith Emperor, Nana. I know. When he was struck down, it released ripples through the Force. Everyone who had felt the Sith Emperor's presence in the past, on Xyost, on Yavin 4, we all sensed what had happened. Arkan invaded soon after, claiming that an Arkan assassinated his father, the immortal Emperor. It didn't take long for us to unravel the truth. Which side did Arkan attack first? Both. Ships from the Eternal Fleet struck at shipyards and rallying points for both sides simultaneously. They favored ambush tactics throughout the war. Takulan sensor technology has far greater range than our own, and their ships can fly much further on less resources. Only vessels retrofitted with Isotope 5 could manage to outrun them. None could truly compete. did the Republic and the Empire manage to hold out? Within three months, the bulk of our naval forces were disabled or eliminated, and the Republic was in the same situation. With naval superiority, Arkham's forces could begin choking off supply lines, trade, any ship travel at all. The Eternal Fleet seemed to be everywhere at once. Coruscant and Drummond Cast were blockaded by the end of the first year. ruthlessly and lost. The Empire's treaty was ultimately negotiated by the Minister of Logistics. Chancellor Suresh also refused to discuss surrender, but the Republic Senate managed to overrule her. A cadre of senators negotiated their own ceasefire terms. All of those senators have since been disgraced or dismissed. I'm sure you can imagine the likely culprit. What of my power base? Moth Pyron. The silencers. Many of the vessels equipped with the silencers were lost in the initial fighting. The rest disappeared along with the Pyrans somewhere in the far outer ring. It is presumed that they were ambushed by the Eternal Fleet, but no wreckage has been found. We must carry on without them. So far, the treaties with Zagul have held. But that will not last forever.
freshwater spring. It should be safe for drinking. She declared herself Empress of the Sith. And the Republic? Suresh remains in power, though she no longer holds the title of Chancellor. The Republic has limits to their ruler's terms, but her replacement is a mere puppet. Both sides see this only as an opportunity to eliminate one another at a time of weakness, instead of combining what strength they have. does nothing to prevent violence between them, so long as their tribute is paid and no one challenges their cool superiority. What does Arkan use the tribute for? Sir cool doesn't seem to need much. A question no one else seems to ask or answer, not in any detail. Sir cool's empire spans a sizable portion of wild space, but not enough to consume the resources they require. I've been working to learn the answer myself. Powerful Zakulan battle stations have been placed in orbit around key worlds to watch for possible uprisings. But there are no ongoing planetary occupations. The ships of the Eternal Fleet simply patrol at random, while the tribute paid to Zakul gradually chokes all economic potential. What about my team? My ship? I have allies looking for them as we speak. With all of the chaos of the last few years, though, it will take time to find them all. For now, we make do with ourselves, Koth, and HK. obviously put a lot of thought into getting me out. Did you think about what would come after? Of course, though I admittedly didn't plan on being stranded in this swamp. For now, let's take things one step at a time. So why me? You clearly went to a lot of trouble to get me out of Carbonite. Before you were captured, you accomplished things no one else dared to attempt. You changed the galaxy more than once. And if things have ever needed to change, now is the time. There is something else. Uh, I've felt it since the moment I found you in Carbonite. There's a power in you. Something new. It's elusive, but I know it's there. I think you're right, Lana. I think the Emperor Valkorion is in my mind. What? After he died, there was a storm of energy. I barely even remember being thrown into the carbon freezing chamber. And then, while I was frozen, I saw things. Dreamed about him, about everything that happened while I was gone. It can't be. If you were controlling you, I'd know it. I certainly saw enough of it on Zyrus. I don't think he's trying to control me. Not directly, anyway. He was trying to convince me to work with him. Whatever he's doing, we can be sure that he's always trying to deceive us somehow. I believe in you, and I appreciate your honesty. I'll remain watchful for any influence he might have over you. For the time being, though, we have no choice but to proceed. What about the others? They wouldn't understand. And like you said, we really don't know anything for sure yet. Let's keep the matter between us for now. Master. 